Elizabeth Catlett's 1946 to 1947 timeless lino cut series, The Negro Woman, captures the transhistorical and transcendental agency of black women while marking a historical precedence for black creative aesthetics, one generation before the black arts movement. Catlett's lino cut series is a poetic manifesto, brilliantly combining 15 prints of the everyday black woman. Further, Catlett's 1976 revised title, The Black Woman, emphasizes the timeless re relevancy of the series to Black and African diasporic people in spite of shifting racial discourse in the 1960s and 1970s. The everyday Black woman is Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, and Phyllis Wheatley, but also domestic workers, artists, maroons, and caretakers. As such, the everyday Black woman is spectacularly heroic, in spite of white supremacist patriarchal domination. Through centering Black women, the series speaks to heroic and revolutionary Africans across the diaspora. For example, the 1946 In Harriet Tubman I Helped Hundreds to Freedom fashions liberated Africans marching in the night. Catlett's print crucially centers Black women's heroic agency against the domination of chattel slavery. The pillar of Tubman directs marching Africans towards an off-camera direction, and Catlett's hatching technique highlights Tubman's muscular arm lighting a clear path in the foggy night. Catlett's The Black Women series forefronts Black women's heroic agency amidst their historic oppression. To that end, Catlett's I Have Special Reservations represents Black women in a segregated bus section with resolute agency. The work's use of hatching technique envelops and centers the face of the lead figure, focusing attention to her furrowed eyebrow and war paint eye wrinkles. The woman is tired, yet steadfast. In the 21st century, such an image may immediately remind us of Rosa Parks. Yet this 1946 print depicts the everyday reality of de jour segregation well before the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott. I Have Special Reservations depicts an unglorious everyday reality for black working women in the 1940s, taking a bus to work as maids, cooks, and field workers. The Black Women series' range of subjects across time sharpens her analysis of black heroic agency beyond the key revolutionary figures of Tubman, emphasizing that the revolutionary exists in the everyday working black woman. The Black woman's attention to Black subjects across time speaks to the timeless nature of Black women's agency, and the last print in the series signals at a liberatory future. In the 1947, My Right is a Future of Equality with Other Americans, the Black woman is confident and self-assured, the hatching running perpendicular to her upward gaze. The African woman looks forward to an uncertain but positively heroic future of Africans overthrowing imperialist, white supremacist, capitalist, and patriarchal domination, be it de jure segregation or neocolonialism in Africa. Catlett's The Black Women series transcends an anthropological approach to her subjects. The line of cut medium itself enables the mass production of inexpensive prints that reach working black women and African diasporic people, marking a change from the precedent of limited edition prints. The line of cut medium represents a landmark moment in Black aesthetic production, with Catlett herself drawing inspiration from the Mexican muralist emanating from Taller de Grafica Popular, or People's Graphic Workshop in Mexico City. Catlett's The Black Women series embodies the 1965 to 1975 Black arts movement and its shift towards a Black creative aesthetic representing the revolutionary Black masses. And though Catlett's series specifically represented Black and African women, the series' resounding influences from the Marxist Taller de Grafica Popular signals towards the anti-imperialist third worldist politics that Malcolm X championed across Black America, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And yet even Malcolm's vision for Black and African unity draws inspiration from anti-colonial movements from Africa and Asia. For example, in Malcolm X's 1963 Message to the Grassroots at the Detroit King Solomon Baptist Church, he charts how people of Africa and Asia 
united to reject their common oppression by European colonial domination, the imperialist pig, at the Bandung Conference. This would become a theme in Malcolm X's politics, as well as the latter half of the Black Arts Movement. Emory Douglas's posters exemplify a global anti-colonial and anti-imperialist front among dominated people of America, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. The Black Panther Party Revolutionary Artists 1970 poster, Get Out of the Ghetto, satirizes the United States as a strangled, pitiful pig, defeated by people of the ghetto, of Africa, of Asia, and of Latin America. Importantly, they strangle the U.S. imperialist pig with their bare hands. Get Out of the Ghetto brilliantly supplants firearms for bare hands to signify that for the working third world people, the tool of their humble labor, including their own hands, become the very tools with which they destroy U.S. imperialism, colonialism, and capitalism. Douglas's work exemplifies the spirit of the Bandung Conference. Third World Solidarity Against Euro-White American Colonialism and Imperialism. Further, Douglas's 1970 poster, When the Slave of Imperialism, similarly supplants the motif of guns for the humble tools of labor of black and colonized people globally. The hatching technique inspires black revolt against imperialism by highlighting the forceful pendulum axe which inevitably swings and strikes the falling imperialist pig. Once more, Douglas's posters emphasize the role of black and African people in the United States in allying with third world people globally. And like Catlett's series, Douglas's poster directs itself to and for oppressed masses. Yet Douglas's work specifically expands the notion of revolutionary subjects towards people of the third world. Furthermore, Douglas's 1970 posters foreshadow the 1972 revision to the Black Panther Party program, which marked a shift in political movement towards anti-imperialist and anti-colonial third world politics beyond the ghettos of the United States. Such a notion speaks decades later to Alison Saar's 2017 topsy-turvy installation. The sculptures of African maroons, armed with the humble tools of everyday labor, haunt the L.A. Louvre. Like Catlett and Douglas's work, this motif at once reminds us of the heroic agency and tremendous power of global anti-colonial and anti-imperialist solidarity among people of Africa, Asia, and Latin America. While the life-size sculptures bring the prescience of revolt to the immediate, one sculpture confidently brandishes the anti-imperialist axe from Douglas's 1970 poster, eager to strike down the imperialist pig. These African maroons are alive. 